firm, we've been responding to numerous inquiries uh, from various leaders in, in certain industries. Uh, this one's particularly relative to the construction industry uh, regarding COVID-19 operational uh, related issues. Um, as a number of businesses are returning to work, their regular modes of operation, returning to the physical plant, we're fielding all sorts of questions regarding maintaining compliance with safety measures, maintaining compliance with fluid never changing laws, guidelines, regulations. Um, so this is just one video that we've provided to give some very fast fleet of foot uh, type of insight as to how to respond with to and deal with these type of issues. So I'm gonna address one question that we've uh, received uh, several times a day and that's uh, from our construction related clientele who are reopening their job sites and their field offices uh, whether it's construction companies builders of whatever sorts um, but they're wanting to know whether their locations are safe for employees and for the general public so let me start with just saying from an overall project planning and management type of perspective general operations perspective Obviously, you want to develop your own personalized, subjective um, safety and job site management plan. When that's developed, make sure it's communicated amongst your ranks, socialized so that first, all your folks have an understanding as to um, how you're going to keep your workforce and your job site safe. Um, as a general proposition, you want to minimize project staffing as much as possible. Um, with respect to um, you know, as, as health measures, you want to implement a daily crew assessment um, that includes health checks uh, on personnel to make sure that ill workers are not reporting to work. Um, and then fundamentally, you want to follow the CDC's guidelines with respect to personal responsibility measures. These are the things that you so frequently see um, in media or, or, or common parlance where we're discussing social distancing, um, perhaps usage of PPE, things of that nature. The CDC is a wonderful, uh, CDC as well as OSHA is a wonderful resource for all of these type of items. Um, and I, I would use that always as a starting point for your analysis on how to comply with guidelines. Regarding on the job site specific, I think that it's imprudent. To, it's prudent to practice a, a stage working protocol where you're having folks work more on shifts, uh, a little bit more deliberate in your project scheduling. Uh, with respect to conducting meetings, tailgate meetings, um, you want to meet outdoors in large open spaces if possible. Implement technology to the extent that you can, web-based applications, so that you're minimizing your face-to-face -face contact. Um, perform meetings and shifts when possible and keeping the same group of, of workers together in order to eliminate exposure. Um, on site, obviously maintain the, the um, suggested six feet of distance between other people and keep your job sites clean. Uh, to the extent that you feel comfortable with or you're required to, utilize PPP. Do not share PPP. Uh, uh, obviously sanitize any reusable PPP. Um, wipe down common areas to the extent that those are being used, whether that's desks, tools, equipment, uh, doorknobs. Do not share tools. Don't share water coolers or water bottles. Don't sh share hand towels at hand washing stations, food, lunches, PPE, things of that nature. Um, one thing I want to pivot to, which is discussion of schedule and project management. Uh, immediately post startup, start taking uh, making a list of the following actions that you need to take and these are the ones that I would generally recommend um, with regard to your project reevaluate the critical path to understand where your highest priority activities are what's the status of them uh, obviously define your um, estimate to complete your estimate at completion uh, to determine project status and update that as appropriate um, inventory your items on-site off-site and in transit and evaluate your manpower, not only of your workforce, but your key trades um, to the extent that, that you need to develop a recovery plan if you're off, off, uh, off schedule or the project's going awry. Um, you know, develop that in concert with your subcontractors 
receiving bilateral loan input up and down the contract chain to include the loan, the owner. Um, track and document the impact of COVID-19. So set up discrete cost codes that track expenses related to COVID-19, um, such as material costs for extra masks or disinfectant materials or required storage of materials off-site um, to the extent that you've had uh, suspended or expedited deliveries, idle equipment, uh, shutdown or remobilization expenses. Um, you want to have discrete cost codes that measure that. That may have contractual input, it may have insurance uh, or ramifications rather, contractual ramifications or insurance ramifications, and you want to be able to itemize it um, to the extent that you can create cost codes that uh, workforce expenses are addressed, um, such as additional personnel required to um, check on the health uh, and welfare of the workers, extra cleaning staff, um, time required to implement additional safety measures, um, time required for shutdown and remobilization, uh, and then perhaps sick time or federally protected leave time. These are things, again, you're want to, going to want to have itemized cost codes for so that you can break it out in the event it gets utilized in, in future. I think if you haven't now, uh, by now, you need to know your contract. So you need to uh, understand exactly what the impacts of this, these delays, what the impacts of um, the project going amiss are. Um, you need to review all of those type of agreements, partic particularly the payment obligations, um, and understand that you've got that type of thing addressed and accounted for for an extraordinary event like that. To the extent that budgets need to be updated, to the extent that communications or notices need to be rendered, now would be the time to do that if you haven't done so. To the extent that um, your contracts afford warranty rights or there's common law warranty rights, you should consider re requesting and documenting extensions of those type of things, as well as um, any type of maintenance obligations. Um, the timing of it all, um, the, op the increased um, exposure, they may have impact on warranty and maintenance type of obligations. So assess that, now's a better time than, than any to do that. Um, and then I would say, just as a practical consideration, um, maximize your progress on things that don't require construction site access. And so this can be anything from all of your corporate governance planning, your employment practices, updating internal policies, or on relative to your project, uh, working on submittals, request, working on RFIs, shop de uh, drawing development and review, change order processing, uh, things like that. The, the things that don't require you to be on the physical job site. Those are things if you haven't been working on them, get those done now while we're still in this transition period. And then of course, develop all your schedule updates um, to the extent that um, document critical path delays, the extent that they were created by labor, material, equipment availability, um, create, update your sequencing of new activities to document COVID-19 impacts, um, and then projected delays to the project that will have relevance later on. Um, and then maintain detailed daily reports to identify by trade the performance of the work to date and then moving forward. Um, to the extent that you're, you want to do material, advanced material tracking, create a material tracking log that would document materials on-site and the status of off-site uh, materials and shipments. Um, identify where the fabricators are in the process to the extent that the ma major fa uh, fabricators have um, uh, material on, on hand. You want to know exactly what that is and to the extent that it takes a longer time for those, those materials to be fabricated, you want to have an, a good understanding of that. To the extent that, that suppliers have been impacted by this, contact them, determine what the scheduled delivery dates are and what the estimates are for resumption of deliveries. Um, to the extent that there's revised shipment dates and detailed explanations, you want to have those type of things documented and well established. Um, back up all of your, your, your logs, make sure that those type of equipment document, the, the things that you utilize to document all of your project status and development, make sure that's well backed up. Uh, backed up. Um, to the extent that you have, um, of course, we've kind of covered this, but 
to the extent that you have escalation, storage, shipping, expedited delivery, cancellation penalties, anything relative to non-acceptance or delayed acceptance of materials, document it. Uh, you might end up in a dispute with your supplier or you might end up in a dispute regarding many different facets of the project. Make sure it's well documented. Um, and then I would also say develop an inspection log um, to the extent that you can track and document the date inspection requests were rendered, to the date of response, the date of uh, the inspection was actually scheduled and it occurred. It, you want to proactively document those, these type of things with respect to uh, potential delays uh, following the restart of work. Um, I hope that's protect, helpful for you in the construction sector to, um, to protect you as you get back to work. Uh, it's hopeful and keep, hopefully it'll keep you out of some trouble with respect to your contract rights and it'll give you a good workplace environment that's safe and compliant with laws. Um, should you need additional guidance or specific recommendations on our council on a situation you'd like for us to review, please do not hesitate to contact us and our contact information is on our website. Thank you.